Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and today we're going to talk about finding sick cattle and a physical exam. And I'm here at the College of Veterinary Medicine where I work and, and teach, and we're going to talk, start from looking in that pen to getting them to the chute until we kick them out after treatment. Thanks for joining me. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine where I'm the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Clinical Epidemiology and I just want to say thanks for watching the show. Today's something that I'm just going to do on my own. A lot of times we have a guest and, and uh, it's easier for me. It's harder to sit here and stay focused. I have uh, adult attention deficit disorder. But anyway, when we start to think about when I work with our crews and feed yards or I work with cow-calf operations, you know, the first thing that, that we really talk about is acclimating the cattle. And you've heard Dr. Tom Knopfsinger be on the show and talk about it, Dr. Kip Lukasavage. And what we mean by that is cattle in the predator-prey relationship are almost always the prey. They're not predators. And until they understand that we are a protector or a caregiver and we're not a predator, they won't show us the clinical signs. So it's vitally important for us to domesticate, for us to get out and spend time with your cows, to spend time with the, the calves when you wean them walking around. You don't have to chase them. You don't have to move them. Just going in and, and washing the water tank is a great uh, acclimation exercise. Uh, sometimes we exercise the cattle and move them around from corner to corner of the pen or maybe we open up the, the drover's alley gate and we just let those calves walk out and walk back in. Just anything we can do to get them used to us and, and understanding us so that when they do get sick they will have trust in us and show us the clinical signs. When cattle don't trust us, 
they hide and mask their clinical signs because the weaker animal is the one that attracts the predators. The weaker animal is the one that is attacked first by the predators. So not only are they taken out of the herd by, by the herd mates, but they are the ones that are then preyed upon. So getting the animals acclimated is, is vitally important. Once we have that, then we gotta start looking for the different clinical signs. And, and the first clinical sign for me is, is anorexia or they stop eating. When animals are lame, when they have a sore, they're injured, they're sick, the first thing they'll do is they'll decrease their, their intakes. It might be a mild intake decrease to start with that grows over time, but you'll start to see that sunken flank or that slab side and that animal that's off feed. And so when we start to see an animal that goes from being full to being empty or being, being hollow, not eating, it's one of those animals, that's when we probably need to move that animal up, take a look, see if there's something that's, that's going on. Other things that I will look for in those animals is, are they off by themselves? Sometimes they'll be secluded by the rest of the herd. Sometimes they just want to be alone and, and get away from the rest of the herd. Uh, do they have a, are they alert? Do they have a response to you when you walk in the pen or when the feed truck comes up? If they don't, if they have that dull look, that depressed look, that kind of I don't feel good look, um, I look at their ears. Um, and, and make a determination on depression score. Uh, the other thing I'll look at is, is if I see a dropped ear. If I see a dropped ear, I start thinking about mycoplasma, especially in little calves. And lastly, we look at their nose, we look at their eyes. If their eyes are sunken, they're dehydrated, you know, like us with getting chapped lips before we get sick, uh, a dry, rough nose is another sign for an animal that's going through a viral infection. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things out in the pen. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for your support over the years, and I'll see you after this message. Hey folks, welcome to our Cattle First Minute, which is sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. Preconditioning season is coming up. And it is vitally important as we think about animal welfare, antimicrobial stewardship, sustainability, and all the different topics that are ancillary to our industry besides just making money that we need to pay attention to. And I don't know of any tool that we have that is better in, in these types of systems and preventing antimicrobial use than preconditioning calves. Proper vaccination, Make sure you work with your veterinarian, getting those calves bunk broke, making sure that they know what a water tank is, under, uh, castrating, dehorning, deworming. All of these things need to be done that make a healthier calf, that make a calf that's a lot less stressed when it goes to the feedlot, and hopefully it'll bring a calf that is much more valuable to you and your farm. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. My calves start healthy and stay healthy, I've got a good shot at making money. That is why I trust Klostrix. 
It gives my calves the protection they need until their own immune systems kick in. Calf raisers trust Colostrix Colostrum Supplements. Colostrix is USDA licensed and proven effective. When your money is on the line, trust Colostrix. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. We're at Kansas State College of Veterinary Medicine. We're talking about fine and sick cattle and or cattle that are lame. So the, the calf that's sick with respiratory disease, we say they have the acronym DART. Depressed, anorexic, respiratory distress, and, and rectal temperature, elevated rectal temperature. Now, on the respirations, if I hear noise during inspiration, so when they're breathing in, <laughs> that is a noise that means that the infection or the problem is in the upper respiratory tract. If I hear it on expiration, <clears throat> that means it's in the lower respiratory tract, like pneumonia or atypical interstitial pneumonia. So understanding that when they're in the pen, is important. So the other thing I look for in the pen is lameness. So whenever I get go out and feed, what I'll do is I make sure all the cattle get up because the animal that doesn't want to get up is usually one that has a sore foot. So I make sure they all get up. Then if I have a lame animal, I will grade the severity of the lameness. If they just get bumped a little bit and they're a little bit lame, what we will see is that they will just have a shortened stride. That animal that, that is lame, <coughs> that is not lame, the back foot should replace exactly where the front foot left. So as they're walking, they're, when they start to get shorter strided where that back foot doesn't reach where the front foot was, that means either the front foot isn't coming as far back or the back foot isn't coming as far up, and that is mild lameness. But that's the first sign of, of understanding lameness in cows. The next one will be not only do they have short stride, but they'll start to have a head bob with a little bit more of severity of, of the lameness. And they always say down with the sound, meaning that if there's a lameness in the front limbs, the head will go down when the leg that is sound is on the ground. So down with the sound. You can pick if, if the head's up when they take the step, that's the leg that they're lame on. The last one is the three-legged lame. If they're putting no pressure, then that's a severity score of three, which is the, the most severe. When it comes to lameness, the first thing that people always told me in veterinary school is 90% of lameness is in the foot. So until you pick up that foot and you examine that foot, there is no way that you can say that that lameness is in the stifle or that lameness is in the hawk. Now, obviously, if you see some big swelling or if it's broken, it's flopping, then obviously I'm wrong and, and you're right. But when we talk about lameness, whether it's subtle lameness in a, in a Holstein cow or whether it's more severe lameness in a feeder steer, um, we don't know if that's an infectious cause of, of lameness or if that's a, a traumatic or an injury that has caused the lameness. So, animals out in the pen, if they're not eating, if we have one that's lame, if we have one that's depressed, again, head down, ears down, sunken eyes from dehydration, dry nose, those are the clinical signs of this animal isn't doing quite right. And that's what we're gonna be looking for. Then when we get it to the chute, there's a whole nother series of diagnos diagnostics that we're gonna do clinically when they get in there. So, so as we come back from the break, I'm gonna start going through what you should do when you get that animal in the chute. You're watching Doc Talk and thanks for joining us.
My name is Karen Cope and I have multiple sclerosis. When you have MS, on the outside you look great, but you know what's really going on in the inside is chronic body pain, chronic fatigue. And there's lots of days that I'd wake up and say, oh, please God, help me get through this day. You know, after stem cells, Chloe, my youngest daughter, she was asked by my father-in-law, how's your mom doing? And Chloe said, uh, Grandpa, I've never had a mom like this before because she was eight when I was diagnosed and she really had no other memory of me but being sick. It's really the simple things that we do as a family, like play cards and, and to be able to win at cards, you know, they all laugh because I used to repeat myself and say, what hand are we on? You know, what's, where are we at? And it's just been really a, a true blessing from God and we're, we're really thankful. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And I have had the pleasure of teaching many of the world's finest students and, and having the opportunity afforded to me to do a show like this. Uh, I'm really thankful for everything that K-State and the people in the state of Kansas have done uh, to partner with us here at Doc Talk and, and beyond. When we start to think about getting that animal. The first thing is is you have to move this animal that's sick or injured to the hospital. Now we don't want to run these animals because we don't want to exasperate the problem that we already have. We want to take our time. These animals can be fractious and on the fight and so you have to be careful when you're around these types of animals as you're bringing them up to the place to do the the examination. And when do you bring them up and when do you leave them in the home pen? The the answer to that question is is, is the sooner the better. The, the longer you wait to treat something, whether it's a lameness or a respiratory disease or, or anything, the, the worse chance of a case outcome there is. So the sooner we treat, the, sooner, the better we have as uh, outcomes, and that's been published in many papers. So it's really important to write down what the animals are being pulled for, because if it's for lameness and you get them in the chute and you forget which one was lame, once they're in the chute, you can't see uh, an animal limping. So as these cattle come in, we want to write. Now, if it's a lameness case, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a rectal temperature. And even on a lameness case, because we can have infectious causes of lameness. So the rectal temperature is something we do on every animal that comes in. Normal rectal temp for a feedlot steer is 101.5 to 103.5. When we get above that, means that we're running a fever and that we probably have some sort of bacterial infection. Uh, generally running below that, we're thinking hypotherm hypothermia, and if it's a baby calf, we need to warm them up. If it's a feeder calf that's a chronic, that has respiratory disease and it temps 99, it's headed towards ground temp and it's checking out on you. So that's really important to, to understand. But normal rectal temp, 101.5 to 103.5. Now, if it's a lameness case, we need to pick up the foot and it's vitally important so that you get a good diagnosis. So we pick up the foot, we're gonna take a look between the toes. If we don't see the infection between the toes, we know it's not foot rot. We look at the back of the, the heel. If we don't see a, a strawberry lesion, we know it's not hairy heel wart. So now we can rule out our infectious causes of disease. Now we're gonna take those hoof tremors and we're gonna go around the hoof. And we're looking for something like toe abscess or a sole abscess. And what will happen is, as we pinch the toe, if that animal is sore, it will retract. And as we pinch that, and a sole abscess is like a, a blood blister underneath your fingernail. And it's very, very distinct and very pinpoint. And so we can make a very easy diagnosis by picking up that foot. Um, 
Foot rot is infectious. We see it more in winter. It'll be a, a lesion between the toes. It's, it's anaerobic, so it'll smell bad. Hairy heelwort is highly infectious across the feed yard or dairy. It'll be that strawberry lesion like in this picture that you'll see on the back. And then when we get to toe abscesses and sole abscesses, again, these are due to separation of the white line and getting some material inside that hoof that causes an abscess or a stone bruise where that animal stepped on something. We have it pinpointed, we'll pair that out we'll get them off. When we come back, we'll talk about the physical exam for, for medicine. You're watching Doc Talk. Hi, I'm Pat Farley, President and CEO of Enzo Discoveries. I'm very excited for the year of 2019 to be here. Enzo Discoveries is going to have a breakout year in 2019. We're now a veteran-owned company. A lot of our amazing products, platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich fibrin, we've developed these from scratch all by veterinarians, for veterinarians. We've got adipose stem cells, bone marrow stem cells, we've got three or four other kits we're going to be releasing this year. And today's a good example. We really value our customers. We're doing a, a value-added service here today. We've actually flown in one of the top ultrasonographers in the country, Dr. Cooper Williams, and he's here teaching some of our best customers from around the country, how to not only ultrasound, but how to effectively inject our platelet-rich plasma and use our other kits. So finally, if you'd like to learn more about us, simply go to our website, Enzo Discoveries, that's E-N-S-O Discoveries, and you'll learn more about this amazing company on the verge of going to the next level. Thank you so much. If my calves start healthy and stay healthy, I've got a good shot at making money. That is why I trust Clostrix. It gives my calves the protection they need until their own immune systems kick in. Calf raisers trust Colostrix Colostrum Supplements. Colostrix is USDA licensed and proven effective. When your money is on the line, trust Colostrix. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State, and we're talking about a physical exam. So we get the calf in the chute, and we're going to do some things. And and. The first thing that I do is take the rectal temp. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the normal rectal temp of a feedlot steer is 101.5 to 103.5. And if they're running a fever, that's something that we're going to pay attention to in our algorithm. So we get there, this animal's off feed, we see the slab side, we go up and we look at the, after I take the rectal temp, I go up and I look at the head. Do they have dull sunken eyes? Sunken eyes are correlates very, very well. It's about the best thing we have to correlate with dehydration, okay? And when we're sick, we become dehydrated. And, and then I'll look at the ears, but more importantly, I'll look at that nose. If that nose is dry and crusted and, and raw looking, that's another indication of this animal is going through some type of viral bacterial type of, of pathogen. So examine the head. Um, you know, with lightweight calves, a dropped ear is synonymous with a mycoplasma infection. So, so a dropped ear, <coughs> um, dull eyes, uh, also a, a uh, crusted nose. So depression, anorexia are some things, high rectal temp. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll take this thing here for two, two reasons. One, I'm gonna listen to the chest. And when I listen to the chest, I'm gonna listen on the right side up right underneath the elbow of the steer because the first uh, lobe of the lung to have bacterial pneumonia in, in, in a feedlot steer is going to be that right cranial lung lobe. So I'll listen to that. 
The next thing I'll do is I'll go around to the left side and where that sunken flank is, I'm gonna put this stethoscope right on there and I'm gonna listen and every, every, once or twice, every minute, I should hear this roar. And what that roar means is that I'm having rumen contractions. So, so I've got rumen contractions, that means the gut's working properly. I listen to the lungs, are they clear or they have raspy noises, meaning bovine respiratory disease. Uh, lots of things go into this, this physical exam. And, and um, I think that, that a lot of times you'll miss more by not looking than you will by not knowing. And, and the last thing I'll look at, because when we have anaplasmosis or, or something to that, you want to look at the gums, or if it's a heifer, you can go back to the vulva, and you can pinch that area or press on that area, and it should be pink. And then as you release the pressure, that should be white from the pressure, and as you release that pressure, the pink will come back immediately. When we have animals that are, that are anemic, those, those could be uh, uh, white or yellow colored, and if we have jaundice from a liver issue in these animals, you'll see yellow around the sclera or the white part of the eye. But just starting at the back end, working to the front end, these are some of the things that you need to, to pay attention to. Now, as far as a case workup, work with your veterinarian on what these different clinical signs mean so that you can apply the treatment in which the veterinarian has made the case definition. Thank you so much for walk, watching Doc Talk. We appreciate your support. We appreciate being able to do this show. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. To the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun.